Welcome back, everyone, to the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Remote Duel Invitational. I'm Billy Brake. We've had some exciting action so far, but we have even more exciting duels to come. Jerome, you want to talk Absolutely. about what we got going on? Absolutely. So in our last match, Sam continued his tear through the tournament, going to 5-0 and and defeating Cameron Neal for the second time this event, 2-1. to one. He now awaits the winner of our next future match between Jesse Cotton and Cody Angeloff. Certainly, it's been crazy so far. This matchup is awesome. We have uh, a world's competitor versus a world's competitor, a YCS champion versus a YCS champion. Jesse also has a UDS championship on top of that. Uh, you picked Jesse as the guy we should watch at the beginning of the day. Are you surprised he's here in top four? Not at all. And I really like what he's done with his Eldritch deck as well, combining it with the Dogmatic cards from Rise of the Duelist, and he's actually getting some new trap card support as well in the form of Ice Dragon Prison, a card that could prove crucial in this matchup against Adamancipators, since Ice Dragon Prison requires you to special summon a monster from your opponent's graveyard, then banish a monster from each field with the same type. You can take a rock from your opponent's graveyard and banish something like a block dragon on field before it can be sent to the graveyard for all the you know, infinite recursion and the constant searching that it's known for. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. It sounds like that card could really make or break this matchup for Jesse. It sounds it's really good against decks that are all relying on the same uh, type, like rocks, as you were saying. I'm excited to see if he's going to pull. He also has cards that can grab it from his deck like Lilith. But it looks like the duels are ready. The decks are shuffled. We're ready for our second semifinal match of the day here at the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Remote Duel Invitational. Jesse Cotton, Cody Angeloff, two Titans. Here they go. Let's duel. Looks like Cody's going to be taking oh, first. It's good news against the trap deck. Well, effect good. Effect? Yeah, effect. And Jesse's Gamma. thinking about it for a second. Gamma. And he goes with Cyphering Gear Gamma. Gamma really, I think, has been the standout card of the tournament. So many of the games we've seen this weekend have hinged on a crucial activation of Gamma, or sometimes one from each side like in game two of our last match. Yep, definitely been a lot of gamma, and it has been a high-impact card yeah, it is for kind of sure. Uh, how would you like to cut? Uh, just do five off the top. We kind of had a feeling that that was going to be the case over the summer, so we uh, gave it the Collector's Rare Bump in Toon Chaos just a couple months ago. Very, very pretty. Yeah. Uh, All right, so that's sent to the graveyard. So, so question or supplier. supplier? Yeah, it looks like supplier is being special summoned from hand because a rock was sent from the field of the graveyard. And that lets him get another Kowaki from his deck, another rock. Yep, and that'll be Guardian. That list, yep, list Iron Core, and Guardian definitely lists Iron Core in his card text. Supplier, really cool card. I'm a big fan of the Kowaki Mirrors. Now, does he have the Researcher as well? I think that's what he needs to continue here. If he's already using Analyzer. Oh, oh, he's got Triple talent. Tactics Talent and a Starlight at that. Wow, that is beautiful. A and he does. He steals Cyphering Gear Gamma. Wow. this is We're seeing some Triple Tactics action showing off how good that card can be going first, even. Oh, I moved the wrong card. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's Gamma, not Driver. Uh, I, I know. I wow, just, and being able to yeah, take control of your opponent's monster because the Gamma summons itself <laughs> to the field? Uh, how can... The versatility feels like of the it's triple almost, uh, Yeah, it feels kind of one step ahead, right? Really? If you're expecting all the Gammas to take out your tuners and you play Triple Tactics Talent to take their tuners. Um, yep. And Jesse, another oh, step ahead, oh. also playing Effect Veiler alongside Gamma in his deck. Looks like a Starlight Effect Veiler, too. Link away the Hug of Fibrax. Starlight Rare mm -hmm. Effect Failure. Not any stronger than the regular sure. Effect Failure, but it feels a lot better. Oh, it definitely does. You feel good, play good. Link Ross going to summon a couple tokens here. Finish Gamma, Finish Supplier. Summon... Oh, he's got Block Dragon in hand. And banish three Earth Monsters to Special yeah. Summon it. So Jesse had two points of interaction, but Cody's still trying to find a way to push through it. 
Yeah, that tactics talent was utterly brutal. It was huge. Trinks into Cerebus just to get the search for Blood Dragon. And now he's got Researcher, but no rocks. It's Researcher, Analyzer, and Seeker. As Gigantus. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. like researcher. Um, cut three. See, I cut three. I like that number. Uh, activate researcher effect. Sure. One. Excavates five. Let's see if he hits a non tuner. He does. It's the Doki Doki. Uh, I'll concede. And that's enough for Jesse. He's already down the two cards from using the Fed Villar and the Gamma. Cody able to still push through, make his board, and that was enough. Jesse's going to be down the first game. Cody one win away from moving on to the finals of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Remote Duel Invitational. But Jesse is not. He's down, but not out. But... Cody wins game one with his Ad Emancipator deck, showing he's using different cards than the previous Ad Emancipators we've seen, like Quakimura Supplier, but showing why it is so good in the deck, especially when your opponent has the Gamma. Triple Tactics Talents coming up huge, taking control of the Gamma, allowing him to still continue. Just fantastic play here from one of the best players that we have around. Yeah, Tactics Talent was really the turning point there. If that card is essentially anything else, he's not getting through because he's not going to have a tuner and his plays are essentially done for. And even if he did continue after that, the Effect Veiler would have put a stop to whatever was next. So Tactics Talent, I cannot understate how powerful that card is and how really the key to that duel. Yeah, it's certainly powerful, versatile, it's really fantastic. Like, when that card came out and I read it, I was like, okay, obviously this is a good card. But will it find its way to be good enough to make it into the 40 cards of all the decks that are already out there? Is it enough to put it in there? I wasn't so sure, but after watching it this weekend, we saw Blair use it yesterday, and it was just as good. I haven't seen this card uh, perform badly yet, even. It's just fantastic. You can either net you more cards. If your opponent has any interaction, which they usually do in Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's good. Yeah, it's basically... You know, what does your deck need? Do you need more gas? If yes, then you probably want Triple Tactics Talent. If you just lose to specific cards, then maybe you want a Called by the Grave or something else. Or if you need to break boards and you're planning to go second, then you need Forbidden Droplet. It's all about figuring out what your deck does best, what your deck needs to be able to beat or play through, and then building around that. You just have to understand your strengths and weaknesses, really. Yep, I certainly agree. Uh, so, we saw Jesse go second, and as you are saying, his deck is a little more trap-heavy. Do you think he's probably going to decide to go first in this game, too? Yeah, I think he's going to want to set up as much disruption as he can. As we saw that, you know, those two cards weren't enough to begin with. The one thing that makes me pause a little bit is the Gamma, but because of the way Eldritch works, how you can activate your trap monster and then chain Scarlet Sangman to get Eldritch on the field so that you can claim the bonus effect of your trap monster, I think he's still going to go first because Cyphering your Gamma is just fine either way. He's probably not going to end with any monsters on his field on the first turn. Right, just like a lot of cards in his back row, as you're saying, and flips it up, gets the monster. He can Gamma first before he ever summons the Golden Lord from his deck. I can see that, uh, and I certainly agree. Uh, what do you think uh, Cody's going to be putting in going second against this deck? I'm going to take a look there. Normally, the uh, generally you want to get stuff out of the game. You want to banish spell and trap cards with cards like Cosmic Cyclone, or maybe just see if you can get, you know, maybe one card up on them. If you take out you know, four cards of the Lightning Storm, for instance, even if two of them are chained, you're still up one. So you might see yeah. a lot of uh, spell and trap removal. Things to beat interaction, essentially, is what you need. How do you feel about uh, cards like Red Reboot against the Eldritch deck? Red Reboot is pretty nasty. If you've got a Red Reboot, I think you want it here. Yeah, I could see that coming down, especially against yeah, a lot of traps. As you're saying, Lightning Storm could be impactful. Cody, 
just a little information about it. He did get third at the 2019 World Championship after winning the NAWCQ. He's done a lot, and he won a YCS in the past couple of years. He is no slouch. Definitely one of the best duels. I've had the pleasure of playing him, and he's very impressive. For sure, and he did a great job at the Team YCS in Vegas uh, just a few months ago, the last time that we were able to have live duel action in person as opposed to remotely. Yeah, they certainly did. Yeah, they, they, made, they made at least top eight, I believe, if not further. Uh, maybe top four, they, even. Uh, but they, they won. His team won. Oh, they won? They yeah. No, I, I don't... Which... which but they might have... Yeah, it was a great tournament either way. In Vegas? Uh, no, I think Scott Page and... Steven Silverman walked away with it in Vegas. But and they were up there, they were very close. Xu Ping just won the UDS, and it was fresh on their team, and uh, they did pretty well. It's pretty awesome to see Cody's consistency throughout the years, too. He's been playing, I'm pretty sure he started maybe as a Dragon Duelist. I know when I first met him, he was a lot younger, and he's never given up on his dream, and he made it all the way to the World Championship and almost walked away a World Champion. Yep, and that's... You know, there's nothing better than that. That's just the last thing. And sadly, we weren't able to have a world championship this year, but he still has a chance to uh, play against many of those world championship level, level competitors here as he goes into game two, up 1-0 over Jesse seven? Cotton. Yep, let's see how it goes. Maybe little things will go a little bit better for Jesse since he gets to go first. Ooh, and he starts with Endear's Servant. Yeah, with the same or lower attack. And be able to... Search his deck for Dogmatica. Yeah, if there's a card you want to Ash, it's that one. I don't know how much uh, protection that he plays against things like that. He may only be playing Cyphering or Gamma. Please, yeah. So Jesse sends the Titanic Lad himself to the graveyard to search for Dogmatica Ecclesia. Almost summon yep. Ecclesia. Use the effect. In the normal summon it. And, of course, he has the Starlight Ecclesia as well. I don't know why I expected anything else. It's very, very pretty. I'm a big fan of the Starlight Rarity. I also like the Collector Rares a lot. A lot. Yeah, yeah. those are really nice. All right, searches for yeah. Dogmatic Punishment. Punishment is a great two-for-one card in decks like this. You could take out a tuner and a non-tuner by just resolving it by sending Entis to the graveyard. Looks like he's just going to set two and go to the end phase. And go ahead and get another search off of Titanic Lad. And how would you like to cut? Yeah, four. Okay. Um, you can do the all top, right. Uh, the top six. So all that seems pretty good. We know that Jesse can take out two monsters. So if there's a uh, tuner, no sorry, a tuner non-tuner combination, he can destroy them both. And leave Cody starting from mm -hmm. zero. Uh, we'll see if Cody drew any of his side deck cards. Maybe a lightning storm to help him navigate this turn. Lightning storm would be huge here. Oh, oh there he's it got is. it. Notify Sanctum. He's got the starlight lightning storm. He's got it. His opponent changed Sanctum. What? Is that what I just heard? Chain artifact Sanctum. Oh, man. He's going to summon that Artifact Scythe his deck and could completely shut Cody out of his extra deck during his That's turn. That's brutal. So, if Cody's got Gamma here, if he saved a Gamma for this, it could he could reverse the blowout. Oh, that would be crazy if he has the Gamma. Since the Scythe activates on the separate chain after the Lightning Storm resolves. Yeah. And then Resolution Scythe Effect activates. And then how would you like to cut as well? Uh, you can just cut in half. Um, I will... A perfect answer to the lightning storm. Has he got it? Uh, I'll change off those. Ooh. I... Forbidden droplet. Not forbidden droplet. It's going to cost him another card. But he can negate. Artifact Scythe and keep his access to the extra deck open. Looks like he discarded Twin Twister. Yeah, all right. That's a lot of side deck cards. Uh, yeah, and that's half his hand. So the other <laughs> half better be pretty good. 
Oh, and the unexpected die. die. That's a good one. If it resolves. Yeah, you're good. Sorry. Wow, what a start. All special summon trumpets here. Trumpeter is a tuner. Angel Trepeteer. I will almost summon Seeker. Wow, what a hand here from Cody. Yeah. Does it go through this time? Yes, it does. But he's got to hit a non tuner. He does. It's Beta the Magnet Warrior. And he hits the beta of the Seeker. That's both normal monsters out of the deck. Uh, Uses both for Gallant Granite. Activate Granite effect. Activates Gallant Granite. Uh, how many cards do you have in hand? I have one. Looks like Jesse might have a response, though. Yeah, if he's activating Gallant Granite, he probably doesn't have Block Dragon already. So Jesse's got to consider if he wants to allow the Halka Firebrack shenanigans or if he wants to keep him away from Block Dragon. Oh, yeah, Fleur. Yeah. Ah, Fleur de Lee. He no, uh, yeah, controls the monster from the extra deck now. Yep, he can uh, negate it. So this is a quick effect. You get to special summon her from the hand if there's an extra deck monster on the field. And she is special summon, and then the effect of a face-up monster is negated. So Gallant Granite is negated. Here's Halka Fibrax. That's awesome. Ooh. That gets ashed. This game has been so back and forth in just two turns. Everything has been responded to. What's left? One card in hand, unless it's the surprise double block dragon. Uh, two cards. This just really shows the evolution you get where, like, there have been so many years where just summoning the artifact size would just end the game. But that was just like the first step into a long turn of many interactions by both players. Yeah, who said there's no interaction in Yu-Gi-Oh? 700 you take? <laughs> oh, no, 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 I, I got it. That's him. all that we're seeing right now. So you're at 70. The layers. Like then the battle. layers of interaction is why uh, these players are playing in top four right now. Because they were prepared, for, for sure. sure. For... Christian Hauke Firebrack stays on the field for more than 10 seconds for the first time in its tournament life. And goes to battle. <laughs> Of all places, taking down Artifact Scythe, who's been halved by Forbidden Droplet. I believe this is a special summon of Dogmatica Ecclesia, because there is an extra deck monster on the field. How would you like to cut? Searches for another Dogmatica Punishment. And I can't stress how key keeping Cody Angeloff away from Block Dragon was here. Once Block Dragon is loose, all bets are off. You'll just have Here's so many cards available. Yep. But the power of Fleur de Lee is undeniable. Leaving main phase one? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we still haven't even seen any Elders cards here from Jesse. Attack with Fleur. Increase the attack on my Dogmatica monsters by 500. Yep. So Fleur de Lee has another ability to boost uh, all of the Dogmatica monsters by 500 permanently. Know. So Fleur de Lee is up to 3,000, and the other two are up to uh, 23 apiece, I believe. Oh, the strong app I have to use. There's. He's going to have the punishment he's going to be able to set? Uh, sorry, 2,000 apiece. I get used to all Stratos-type cards having 1,800, but this is more of a Deneb-type card. Good old Deneb. i take a minute to look up a okay, card yeah. on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Neuron app. Sure. All right, so Halka Fibrax is banished What's to special summon a tuner. Uh, a synchro oh, tuner, rather. Still over the marcher. And at this point, and it looks like Cody's just trying to stave off trumpet. damage. Yep. And then attack for 2,000 yeah. directly. Yeah, Jesse's showing the power of the Dogmatic cards. But he's got 7,000 attack points on the board um, there. Your turn. 
That five hunger is going to persist. Um, does fl is flurry permanent? It's permanent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, draw. Mm -hmm. And we know that that is dogmatic and punishment on the field, which is a free two for one. Can you show your grave? So Cody's got to get two cards on the field and not have them be destroyed, but he only has, I believe, two cards in hand. Uh, I'll concede. So yep. there is nothing he can do here, and he concedes. It looks like Jesse is going to push this to a game three. Yeah, what a game! Ooh. Yep. I really, I, can't, I, I was, used to, I saw the scythe. I was like, okay, Cody's finally going to have to slow it down. He's going to have to take it easy. But nope, he had the droplets back and forth but jesse's able to navigate his way to a victory and even out the series one to one the winner of this next game will be moving on the finals to face team sam and there is the man himself jesse cotton one of the best duelists this game has ever seen played at the last three world championships trying to get another win under his belt but he has to go through cody first and i know that he's got eldritch cards in that deck somewhere we saw them yesterday I uh, haven't exactly been seeing a whole lot of them today, but in the end, it didn't matter. The Dogmatica cards were very, very strong. Yep, certainly. I, I'm a big fan of Eldritch. Like, if I were to play in this tournament, that's what I would have played. You know, some Synchro Eldritch action. The Golden Lord is so good. But yeah, Jesse's showing he doesn't need it to win. We'll have to wait and see if maybe the Golden Lord will make an appearance here in Game 3. That's got to be a little bit scary if you're the opponent, right? If the major portion of their deck is Eldritch cards, and they didn't have to use any of them to beat you. That's a little, uh, that's a little spooky. Yeah, what's going to happen when he draws, like, a really good hand? How is uh, Cody's Adamantator going to have to deal with it? But he does get to go first this time. So we'll have to see if that changes things up for him and makes him maybe be able to build up a board that Jesse isn't able to break and take an easy win here. What I've learned from this tournament is that there is no board that's impossible to break. Like, that's yeah, what I learned. I've watched enough uh, enough of Sam's matches to know that there's no such thing and that you are always in danger of at least getting eaten by a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, certainly. It's really cool to see, like, all the interaction, like, players have. They've designed their decks really well to where they have, like, their key combo, what they're trying to do, and then have all the other layers to allow access to go or prevent their opponent from stopping their own combo. It, it's pretty cool, and it's not a surprise to me that all these players have made it to the top four when the other 12 duelists were definitely some amazing duelists. And sometimes you just got to play beatdown as well. Like, once you've negated all of the super powerful stuff, what's left is a bunch of monsters on board, and they have to fight it out. And that's kind of how that last duel went. Uh, the traps were removed immediately with Lightning Storm, but we had, <laughs> we had Artifact Sanctum come into play, and just when you think that's it, well, no, here comes Forbidden Droplets. We're going to try again. And then, you know, to see the Fleur de Lee come down from uh, Jesse's hand, block off Block Dragon, it was just, it was stunning. It was an amazing duel. Yeah, it's, it's always awesome watching, like, great duelists go at it with a lot on the line. Because a, a lot of people, what they want, they want that title. They want to be king of games. They want to say, I was the winner of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Remote Duel Invitational. And I know they want that more than anything. And it just leads to some really exciting games and some high-level gameplay from some high-level duelists. One of the keys is just to never quit. As long as you know that you have something you can do, don't quit until every single option is exhausted. A lot of times you might see the scythe and be like, well, that's it. And somebody might scoop right there, but you can't do that if you want to be at this level. You have to play the games out. You have to understand everything you can do, do everything you can to win. And that's what we're going to see as we go into game three between Jesse Cotton and Cody Angeloff. Yep, here we go. This is it. This is for all the marbles. The winner is moving yep. on to the finals to face Sam and his dinosaurs. And it looks like Cody's starting off with a Guardian, which is huge. Oh, it'd maybe not as, be maybe a not lot as better if it came with a researcher. Sorry, <laughs> maybe I spoke too soon. Just a Guardian. So he's playing Guardian yeah. Control. All right. So Kowaki Mirror Monsters, if you're unfamiliar with them, at the end of each of your turns, you essentially have to either reveal a card from your hand that matches its type, uh, or discard the card Iron Core of Kowaki Mirror from your hand. So block. Cody there revealed that he had Block Dragon in his hand to keep Guardian on the field. Dragons. Two cards face down. What kind of things might Cody have there? Could be a set Twin Twister. Uh, could possibly be. 
We know he has Twin Twister from the last duel. There you go. And I was expecting him to put it, it in, just to yeah, have that in-phase Twin Twister might be the only thing he could do to get rid of some of those back rows, yeah. but... Should be a pointer? Netting Jesse. Ooh, a pointer, pointer Red didn't Lotus? Do, uh, didn't do Cameron Neal very much good. He had to reveal that he had no interaction and just got <laughs> to choose his destroyer, as they say. Yeah, pay 2000 to see that your opponent's going to beat you that turn. It's not a good feeling. And you really have to watch out for the part where you have to reveal your own hand your when servant. you're using a point of the Red Lotus. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. You get to take one card out of their hand, but they get to see everything you've got. So if you're going to use a point of the Red Lotus, you might want to set more cards. <laughs> Sans Sans Entis. Entis. Yep. Servant. He's going to eliminate that Guardian. Now that does take the monster off of Cody's field, which frees up Gamma you know if to Cody drew it. Yeah, we'll certainly to see if he has it here. Jesse taking a second to think. There's a lot on the line here in this game. He's really deciding what he wants to destroy with Entis. Entis, I believe, destroys any card on the field. So he may choose to go after a back row to try to bait the Guardian, but he's going to go for the Guardian itself, just take it right out. Uh, normal summon, for the effect. That's true. Please see effect activates, gets a search. Hmm... Now, last time around, uh, Punishment was the search both times. He apparently drew the fleur de -lis, but fleur de -lis was so key last time around. You gotta make sure you have it. And that's if Cody's able to get some extra deck monsters onto the field this game. No yeah, Punishment. He does indeed get Punishment. Punishment's still good as a two-for-one. How would you like to cut? If he can keep it on the field. We are uh, speculating that Cody's face-down cards involve at least one spell and trap removal option. Very likely a twin twister. Battle phase. Gonna go straight to battle. 1,500. Get some damage in. You there? Uh, yeah. 1,500 directly? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's okay. It always gives me a little giggle when you see that you're there. Like, are you thinking? Did you hear me? It always makes me laugh. I have those same uh, interactions like playing in person, too, where I'm not certain if the person heard my move or not, when they're just so deep in thought. Sets so two. Uh, Sets so three. It's got to at least make him think about the Twin Twister. Ooh. Yep. Doesn't look like he has it. He may be waiting to see his next draw, see if he can get another Earth Monster. Yeah. That would make sense. Okay. Um, reveal. So just a, oh, okay, reveal. Um, yeah. He successfully Wait, special summons summon. the... I believe that's Analyzer. Punishment targeting the Analyzer. And he immediately targets that with Dogmatic Punishment. Yeah. Trying to shut Cody off before he can get started. Chains with... Red re Red Reboot! Oh! That's going to be huge. No, there's no white points. Sure. No solemn judgments Devers. or anything there. So it's set face down. Jesse's going to get another card. I'm at 65, but he can't so play traps. My red and the, set, so yeah, red reboot is set in this case, so he doesn't pay half his life points. You only pay if you're playing from mm -hmm. the hand. Thinking in resolution. Yeah, that's fine. Looks like he's going to set infinite impermanence from his deck thanks to the red reboot. Uh, how would you like to cut? Um, just half. Mm 
Okay, you're good. Uh, Interesting stuff here. Analyzer is activated. Ash. Ash. Met by Ash Blossom. Okay. This is a special summon from deck. Excavated cards are still in the deck. So this would be a special summon from the deck. Um, how many cards somehow? Three. There it is again. Triple Tactics Talent. Choosing which of those powerful forbidden effects he wants. I will take it from you. Sure. Goes with change of heart. Uh, taking control of Ecclesia. Man, this triple tactic talents could really make all the difference here. Okay. Alongside that red reboot, which was just devastating to Jesse Cotton. Yep. Uh, it's a bit of a tough situation. So he's got the monster off of Jesse's field, and he's going to have to use it for something. But if that something is met with a Psy frame here, Gamma, then he might have some lingering regrets about not peeking at the hand with a Forceful Sentry ability. Of course, it's also Jesse's possible that he can't do anything about it. <laughs> True, yeah. It's either, it's either going to be all green light for Cody, or Jesse will have a, that other interaction in his hand in the form of Cypher and Gamma. And it's he also, also a that one effect, that uh, Yeah, there's also a possibility of you know a spell card being set. Ooh, that's true. Cody, knowing how important this, this play mm -hmm. is going to be, not sure if uh, Jesse plays Forbidden Droplet or not. Cody probably doesn't know. Thinking. Ooh. Two in hand, right? Uh, Does he have the Gamma? One in hand. Hmm. All right, so we know that Cody's card in hand is Block Dragon because he had to reveal it with Guardian. Right. Activate Sorry from Gamma. Wow. He's wow. got it. He does have the Gamma. That is insane. All right. Uh, you summoned that from him? Yeah. Okay, so you have oh. a card left in hand. Ooh. Yeah. You have a driver in his hand, though. Uh, I will... That's a little rough. That's a little rough. Okay, three monsters banished. Yep. Plays that last card from hand. Sure. Uh, block golem. It is the block dragon. dragon. And he flips. Sure. Oh, he wow. flips Forbidden Droplet uh, to okay. negate the effect of Gamma on the field, even though it doesn't do anything, to send his own Block Dragon to the graveyard. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So using all of his cards to get a reset and get three Rock Monsters yeah, from his deck to his hand. Correct. All right. So the cards that are still live here are... Uh, actually, two of the three tuners should be. He should be able to play both of the level twos. Wow. I, I have no words. Like Just when I think this game was like looking like one way, the players show me that they're not out of it just yet. I don't think he used his normal summon either. Nope. Because the analyzer was special summoned. No, I'll cut five to the bottom. You know, normal summon the guardian? Yeah. Sure. I'll researcher. Sure. All right, he's going to take a look at those top five. Block Dragon. Agantes, not eligible. Infinite Impermanence, nope. Unexpected Die, and... Wow. Is that last Tackle one. Crusader? On the yes, last one, he gets Tackle Crusader. Activate Seeker Effect. Sure. Adam Inspector showing why they're so powerful. So just keep on going. Yep, and he's already hit two targets. Got plenty in this one. I think just I how the close rocks. he was. It's a total disaster. If his hand wasn't exactly that, this game would be basically over. But now he's able to just turn everything around off one block dragon. It's, it's incredible. The red reboot. Like, every layer of this turn has just been insane to me. But I expect nothing less from, from these top duelists. 
Sure. And if you're watching home and wondering why Jesse's not activating any of his face down cards, it's because that red reboot has uh, locked yep. his traps down for the remainder of the turn, unless he has a spell set face down. Yeah, this is where you would want a card like Forbidden Droplets. Uh, You've got two cards that you can just send off the field immediately in the Gamma and the Driver. It's essentially free to negate two things, but uh, he does not have it. How can Fiber X is going to summon the O line from his deck? Cody knows he has to try and find a way to get to game here, because if he doesn't, all of Jesse's face downs will become live again. But with cards yeah, like yes. Access Code Tiger, I can see him easily finding a way to do it. Yeah, you got to get like a Savage Dragon Access Code Talker here. I think that is the play that wins it. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's fine. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so up there, let me read something real quick. Okay. Um,. Can he do it though? He can definitely go access code. Can you send to access code? Yep, here uh, comes the access code. Uh, yep. the unicorn. Sure. So he gains 3,000. Uh, this is card. what, 53 and 34? This is enough damage, but it doesn't have yeah, the protection that a savage would have. To destroy camera. Sorry. Uh, then I banish these three. The special element, Black Dragon. Yep. Got the block dragon too. Now there are monsters on the field. He could special summon a flirtily or no, nope, but he doesn't have it. That's it. He does not have it. Wow. And Cody's going to take down <laughs> Jesse, taking him all the way to game three and but moving on to the finals. Big congratulations to Cody, who's going to be facing down Sam Dinosaurs. What a match! I thought both players had it multiple times, and I was wrong. There he is, Cody himself. Will he take it? We're going to have to wait and find out. What a match, Jerome. Yeah, the one-off Red Reboot. Limited card. The bane of Eldritch decks everywhere. Cody's got yeah, it. We, ta we talked a little bit about it before getting, yeah, game two, where the Red Reboot would come into play, and you were like, oh, yeah, if he draws it, it's over, and yep. like, it was. like Even though Jesse still had some interaction, he had an Ash Blossom and a Gamma in his hand, Cody had the perfect cards to fight through it and make his whole, whole board, and was able to take Jesse down in one turn. He had a ton of cards. Yep, but, but stick around. We do have the finals coming up of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG Remote Duel Invitational. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>